Okay, starting with number 19 on the review, um, we're going to start using StatCrunch. Now this one still says standard normal distribution. So even though we're using StatCrunch, um, if it says the word standard, you're going to leave the mean at zero and the standard deviation at one. So on StatCrunch, you're going to go to Stat, Calculators, Normal, and it'll pull up a bell curve for you. We're going to leave the mean at zero and the standard deviation at one because of the word standard right there. And this wants to know the probability that your z is less than negative 1.79. So this just gives you two options, but remember equals just like in the unit before doesn't mean anything. Um, or it doesn't add anything to your probability. So less than or equal to is the same as just strictly less than. So you're going to leave that sign less than, and we're going to type in negative 1.79 to match this probability statement, and press compute. And that will give us the area or the probability under the curve. Notice how now it's not exactly the same shape, but you're shaded on the right side. And this is a little bit um, to the right of negative 2, where this one also is. So just make sure your pictures match when you plug them into StatCrunch to what you have over here. And that more than likely your answers will be right when you do that. So we'll get 0.0367. Um, make sure you round appropriately. When it asks for area or probability, you're usually going to use four decimal points. It, if it asks for the z-score, you're going to usually use two decimal places. So this one's the same thing, except we're shaded on the right, and our sign says we want greater than. We're still doing standard normal, so leave it at zero and one. You're going to change this sign to greater than and have negative 0 0.67. My pictures match, so my answer is 0 0.7486, because that 7 will round the 5 up. You can also copy this entire thing, do Control c to copy, and then Control v to paste, and then you can round it once you get over here. That way you don't mistype any numbers if that'll help you out. On this next one, we're still using StatCrunch, but it wants to know between these two values. Now, it's kind of they're kind of running together here, so let's look at our probability statement here. We're still a standard normal and we're going between, so we're going on StatCrunch, you're going to select between and it opens up a double inequality for you. And you're just going to enter your two values here and press compute. My pictures match, so my answer is 0 0.208. 2008, sorry. Um, even though this has the long string, it'll accept four decimal places, so make sure you um, are rounding correctly. Now, when you get to 22, um, we're still dealing with a standard normal distribution, but in this case it's giving us the area, not the z-score. So I'm going to go back to standard, because I'm not shaded between two values, and I'm shaded on the left, so I need to be less than. And then what I'm going to do is in the last box where we have been getting our answers from, that's your area or probability box. So you're going to put the area in the last box. And then your answer, your z-score, will be in the probability statement. And again, you can copy and paste that or just type it over there. And it wants to, again, it's got the whole string there, but it wants two decimal places. So we're going to do negative 1.28. Twenty-three is the same type of question, except it's shaded on the left, I mean on the right. So you're going to change that to greater than or equal to, and then put the area in the last box. Also notice that if you change this, it changes your um, whatever you entered to begin with. So if you accidentally put the wrong sign and you change it, go make sure you go change 
um, whatever you put in the box to start with, change it also. So we're doing greater than because it's shaded on the right and our area is 0.9. So our Z score is negative 1.28. And again, make sure your pictures match. This one, we're going to go back to between. We want the two Z scores. This is centered in the middle. That matters, so that means we can do the between. And our area is 0.5. When you do compute, that will give you your two answers. They will be the same numbers when it's centered in the middle. Just one will be negative and one will be positive. Um, 25, it wants you to sketch and then, um, well, this first part just wants you to sketch it. So if you look at your probability statement, you're just going to pick between and then you're just going to drag these to the appropriate values. So that would be between negative 1.7 and negative 1.2. Now on this one it says sketch the region corresponding to the statement where you, you're trying to find where to put these so that your area is 0.5. So we actually have this already over here, um, but you're going to choose between again because it's between these two values. And this only goes to the tenths place. So our first one would be negative 0.7 and then positive 0.7 would be the upper bound. So that's what that graph would look like. Um, so I didn't have to change it just coincidentally because that was the same area up here. Um, but if it's different, that would you would pick between and then just type in whatever they give you for this value in this last box. Um, this one is the, even though there's not a picture, look at what it's giving you. It says probability that Z is less than C equals 0 0.05919. So we're going to go back to standard and we're trying to find C to two decimal places. So your Z score. Um, and we're just going to match our probability statement. So less than or equal to and 0 0.51 or 5919 is going to be your area or probability. So our answer would be 0 0.23. Um, now on 27, on this one we have a normal distribution, but it doesn't say the word standard. It just says it's normally distributed normally distributed and then it gives you a mean and a standard deviation so instead of leaving this at zero and one it's not standardized anymore so we're going to use those values 13.5 and 0.6 and this is from section 6.2 um, so we're going to do that it says how much would a package need to weigh to be the top three percent of all packages so if you need to draw this out but the top three percent is going to be shaded on the right so it's going to be greater than or equal to three percent would be 0.03 as a decimal and compute so that gives us our top three percent is starts at 14.628 and you're going to do two decimal places, so 14.63. On this next one, it gives you um, the mean and standard deviation. We're going to do 88.6 as your mean and 5.2 as the standard deviation. And it wants you to find P of 81. Whenever it wants you to find percentile, that's always the lower percent is your 81 or the P of whatever is the lower percent. So you're going to change that to less than or equal to. And then we're going to have 0.81 
will be 81% to the left and the other 19% to the right. So your answer would be 93.17. This one, same type of problem. Um, it wants the heaviest 8%, so that would be over here on the right. So you'd enter your values, your mean and standard deviation. And then the heaviest would be greater than or equal to 8% is 0 0.08. Move your decimal two places and compute. And that's your heaviest 8% starts at 287.48. Uh, and it says round to the nearest gram. So that would be 288. Well, 287, sorry. Um, this next one, same type of problem. It's normal. Our notation tells us our mean is 81.7 and our standard deviation is 6.1. And it wants to know the probability that X is less than 88.5. So you're just going to use StatCrunch again. Enter your mean and your standard deviation. And we want to know X is greater than or less than. And remember, the equality doesn't matter, so that less than or equal to is the same as just strictly less than. And compute. So we're going to have 0 0.8693. Um, the reason why it has two answers is this is using a different um, method, and this is using StatCrunch. So... We're going with the stat crunch. It would mark either one of those correct, but for our purposes, we're using the stat crunch answer. Okay, same thing on this one. Um, 32 is the same, except you would change it to between to find your answer. Um, 33, I know it's a word problem, but don't get bogged down. It's still the exact same stuff. You've got a normally distributed, gives you your mean and standard deviation. Um, and then it wants to know um, what percentage of pregnancies last beyond 442 days. The only thing to be careful about this is it wants the percent as an answer. So um, we've got 270 and 15. And we need to go back to standard. And we want to know that's greater than... 242. Compute. This is the probability, so as a percent, you'd move your decimal two places, so it would be um, 96.9. .9. It wants it accurate to 1, so it would be 96.9%. 90, .9%. So it's asking for percentage, and then it also has the percent symbol out here. That's how you know that you need to move your decimal by multiplying by 100. Okay, on this one, um, this one says the number of chocolate chips in a popular brand of cookie is normally distributed with a mean of 21 and a standard deviation of 1.9. When the cookies come out of the oven, only the middle 90% in terms of the number of chocolate chips are accepted. So that means that um the anything that doesn't have that percentage of chocolate chips gets um rejected so what are the cutoff numbers for the number of chocolate chips in acceptable cookies so you, we want to know the middle 90 percent so we're going to go back to between and the middle 90 percent would be 0.90 that's going to give you your two values that contain 90% of the chocolate chips if your mean was 21. So we're going to have, um, it wants an integer, so that would be 18 would be our minimum and 24 would be your maximum. So if the cookie has between 18 and 24 chocolate chips, 